So, you know, the pandemic has really shown us that the world is divided into the digital haves and the digital have-nots. And women and girls are a large part of the have-nots group. And when you layer that with poverty, poor women and poor girls are a very big part of that part of the world which no longer has access to the internet. Um, so that means that they don't have access necessarily to educational opportunities, to telehealth, to telemedicine, to financial access. You know, the pandemic, what it did was it moved so many industries and services online, which means in some ways it made the digital gap worse because at least prior to the pandemic, much of this was physically available. And so if you give women the opportunity to have digital access, you then are opening up opportunities in education, in health, in financial inclusion. Well, you know, there are a lot of problems in the world that are, simply aren't acknowledged to the degree that they should be. And then it takes a major global crisis like the pandemic to make people sit up and take notice of something. Violence against women is a good example. All of us who work on women's rights knew that this was a huge problem even before the pandemic. But it took the pandemic for everyone to wake up and say, oh my God, this is a real problem. And so cyber violence is the same thing. It is actually a much larger problem than we want to acknowledge, but it's an area where it's really hard to collect data because people don't typically report this. The signs are not physical. The impact is mental more than physical. And so because of under-reporting and because of lack of knowledge, it isn't sufficiently understood or dealt with.